All right, so I found nine entry-level remote jobs that do not require a college degree or any previous work experience. And the best thing is, some of these you can actually make it to six figures. Now, the first one on this list is gonna be a career you probably don't hear about all that often, and that's going to be a game writer or game journalist. In this position, you're responsible for crafting captivating narratives, reviewing games, conducting interviews, and overall just keeping gamers informed and entertained. Red. Why did you make a game that was even harder to control? And being a game writer or journalist is kind of like being a drunken bard of the gaming realm. Enchanting players with your words and leading them on epic quests through the power of storytelling. Hello, Advent Skip. There's a drag skip. Thank you, hero. We truly believe that with... Uh... And this allows you to combine your passion of gaming with writing skills. And this one popped on my radar when I saw a CNBC Make It article about a rash who's a 19 year old making $10,000 a month doing this. And he makes most of his money by writing backstories for video game characters. So he started off by creating an account on Fiverr and becoming a freelancer. And within two months, he was making around $9,000 a month. Now, according to Glassdoor, if you did this as a job, you'd expect to make about $53,000 a year. So some of the skills you need for this one are obviously writing skills, and a passion for gaming and the ability to meet deadlines. A great way to start is by making gigs on Fiverr or doing other types of freelancing work. Then you can build your portfolio and try to get a full-time job. So some of the pros of this one are you can get paid to play and write about your favorite games. You have an opportunity to connect with fellow gamers and industry professionals, and you get paid to constantly stay up to date on the latest video game news, which you'd probably be doing anyways. Some of the cons of this one are competition can be somewhat fierce, deadlines can be tight, and balancing personal gaming with work responsibilities can be somewhat challenging but overall i'm going to give this one an opportunity score of eight out of ten quick video break i wanted to talk about the three-day remote job challenge so i'm really excited about this i'm going to be doing it the 28th 29th and 30th of july and basically i'm going to be teaching you how to get a remote or a work from home job in three days that's going to be the challenge you're going to be learning directly from me it's going to be a zoom session and at the end of each day i'm going to have an assignment for you to do the next day so if that's something that interests you go ahead and check it out i'll put it down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. Hope to see you there. The next one on the list is going to be great for you if you're a fan of organization, and that is going to be a professional scheduler. Yes, you can actually schedule for people professionally. And this is where you're basically like a maestro behind the scenes that's orchestrating schedules, events, and appointments with precision and finesse. And being a scheduler is an excellent entry point into the world of remote work. And a fun fact about this one is professional schedulers have actually been around since the 1800s. And this is because railway systems had tight deadlines and required precise scheduling. Now, there's a lot of different types of schedulers. For instance, you could work for an executive and schedule their meetings. But in many cases, you are going to be a scheduler for somebody who is going to be closing sales. So you're basically going to be setting up appointments and making sure that people are qualified and it's a good product that's going to help them before they actually go to the person that's going to close them on the sale. And according to Glassdoor, schedulers make about $42,000 a year. And in many cases, there's going to be opportunities for commission so you can make even more than that. So some of the skills you would need in this position are going to be organizational skills, attention to detail, excellent time management abilities, effective communication skills, and the ability to adapt to changing priorities. So to embark on your journey as a scheduler and get started with this, you're going to need a stable internet connection as well as a laptop. And there are many companies that are hiring for this position. So some of the pros of this one are you get to work on time management and organizational skills. You have lots of different opportunities in various industries. And this is a position that will lead to a lot of potential for career growth down the line. Some of the cons of this one are you do have to have meticulous attention to detail. You may have to deal with scheduling conflicts and last minute changes, and there is limited in-person interaction. But overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 8.5 out of 10. Now, if you're a fan of sports, the next one on the list might be great for you, and that is a sports content creator. And you could do this for basketball, football. You can even be a live sports content creator where you basically live stream while games are happening, and you can finally start getting paid to watch sports, and you can finally replace that TV that you broke when you threw your remote at it after your favorite team lost the championship. <laughs> And there are actually a lot of open jobs available for this. And of course, you can start your own thing as well. For instance, Austin Mills started his sports content creation journey when he started posting videos of him draining half court shots and he uploaded them to YouTube and Instagram and they ended up going viral on Instagram. So the pay is gonna vary quite a bit here, but Sella has a live sports content creation position that pays about 22 to $36 per hour. It also has benefits such as 401k, etc. And sports content writers make about $48,000 a year. And of course, 
if you start your own thing, you can make much, much more than that. So some of the main skills you need for this are, of course, excellent communication skills, the ability to engage an audience. <laughs> the knack for staying up to date on the latest sports trends, and the ability to be a little bit controversial and give some hard takes without going too far. Think Stephen A. Smith. Some of the pros of this one are the opportunity to turn your passion into a career, the creative freedom to express your own opinions on sports topics, and the potential for career growth within the sports industry. Some of the cons here are it can be a competitive field, it does require you to stay up to date on sports trends, and initial audience building can be challenging. But overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 7.5 out of 10. For the next one, we're going to be jumping into the medical industry, and there is a ton of remote jobs available in this industry. And the one we're going to be talking about today is a medical records retrieval specialist. And your job is going to be to collect and organize patient files, ensure accuracy and confidentiality, because that's extremely important in the medical field, and support the healthcare industry like doctors and nurses, etc., with vital information. And this is kind of like being a medical librarian. You want to make sure that medical records are very easily retrievable, but at the same time, you have to make 100% percent sure that they are safe and secure. If an item does not appear in our records, it does not exist. Now, according to Glassdoor, medical record specialists make about $37,000 a year. Some of the skills you need for this are a strong attention to detail, organizational skills, familiarity with medical terminology, and proficiency in computer systems. And to get started with this, you basically just need a computer and internet access. Now, depending on the state you live in, there may be some training requirements, and typically the job itself will train you. So some of the pros of this one are it's an opportunity to contribute to the healthcare system remotely. It's a chance to gain knowledge about medical procedures as well as terminology, and you get to develop your organization and data management skills. Some of the cons of this one are it is relatively low pay, remote work can require self-motivation and discipline, and there is limited direct patient interaction compared to other healthcare-related jobs. But overall, this is a great way to get your foot in the door in the medical field. It's not necessarily something you'd want to do for the rest of your life, but it's a great entry-level job that you can start working remotely very quickly. And so for that reason, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10 opportunity score. Another one in the healthcare field is going to be an enrollment eligibility specialist. And this is basically where you get paid to navigate the insanely complicated healthcare system in the United States of America. So this is a great chance to get experience in the healthcare and insurance industry at the same time. And this position has become increasingly important since the implementation of the Affordable Care Act in 2010. And there's a lot of job openings available for this one and it also has really good reviews online. And according to Glassdoor in this position, you make about 42,000 dollars a year. Now, some of the skills you need for this are strong attention to detail, analytical skills, and proficiency with computer systems. And this is another one where in order to get started, you just need a computer and an internet connection. And depending on the state that you're in, there may be some training requirements, and usually the company you work for will train you. So some of the pros of this one are you get an opportunity to gain valuable insight and skill into the medical and insurance industry. You get to help individuals receive the benefits that they deserve, and it can be a really good stepping stone to other better jobs. Some of the cons is it does require meticulous attention to detail and the ability to navigate the insanely complicated healthcare system. And most of the time, patient interaction is going to be over the phone. But overall, because of how easy it is to get into it, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 9 out of 10. Now, the next one on the list might be great for you if you love traveling, and that's going to be a travel consultant or a travel agent. And in this position, you get to help people to plan trips, fix their itineraries, and ensure that travelers have a smooth and unforgettable experience. Can't believe I flew And I found this story of a travel agent who was making $78,000 per month, not $78,000 per year, $78,000 per month from commissions. Damn, that's a lot of money. So yeah, you can make really good money in this role. Now, typically, according to Glassdoor, travel consultants who work in jobs make about $57,000 a year. Now, some of the skills you need here are excellent customer service skills, attention to detail, cultural knowledge, and the ability to multitask. And this is another one where all you need to get started is a phone, a computer, and an internet connection. And some formal training and certification can be helpful, but you don't need to do it. So some of the pros of this one are you have an opportunity to turn your passion for traveling into a rewarding career. You also get access to exclusive deals and discounts in case you want to travel yourself, and you constantly get to learn about new destinations and cultures. Some of the cons are it can involve long working hours, especially during peak travel season. You do have to deal with unexpected travel changes, such as, you know, what happened in the world a few years ago, and you do need to stay up to date with industry trends as well as travel regulations. But overall, this one is really solid. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 opportunity score as well. Now, the next one on the list might be for you if you have a passion for music, and that is a music provider. In this position, you're going to be a behind-the-scenes maestro who curates perfect tunes, selects killer tracks, and delivers ecstasy to listeners' ears. Na, 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 na. 
And basically what you're going to be doing is either creating, mixing, or curating music for different projects. So one example of something you might do is create a playlist for a wedding. You might be mixing and mastering songs that have already been created, or you might be writing the lyrics to a song that somebody is trying to create. And a really good website to get started with this kind of thing is airgigs.com. Just about anything music related is posted on here, and there's lots of people looking for this type of talent. And I saw the story of this guy who actually created 19,000 different jobs, and he works from home, and he makes really good money. But if you got a job with this position, you'd still make about $39,000 a year. So some of the skills you need to excel in this would be, of course, a good ear for different music genres, strong organizational skills, a talent for music and creating playlists, and a passion for discovering new and exciting artists. A great way to get started with this is on a website like airgigs.com, or you could also try fiverr.com. Then you could build up your portfolio and possibly get hired in a full-time job. Some of the pros of this one are you get paid to do your passion for music. You also get to constantly discover new artists and genres, and it's an opportunity to get experience in the music industry. Some of the cons of this one are musical taste is extremely subjective. There can be a lot of competition, and you need to keep up with evolving music trends and industry developments. But overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 7 out of 10. So the next one on the list may not be the most glamorous job in the world, but it is relatively high paying and it's pretty easy to get into, and that is becoming a debt collector. So where's our money? So basically, you're going to be chasing down people who have delinquent payments, and you're going to try to get them to actually pay off their debt. And a fun fact about this one is debt collection has actually been around since 3000 BC. So this is a career that's been around for over 5,000 years. And contrary to popular belief, you don't have to be a tyrant to be a debt collector. In fact, there was a really good post on Reddit that reads, I worked in collections and helped countless people get out of collections while improving their credit. Ask me anything. So in many cases, you're actually going to be working with people and helping them through their problems. And debt collectors do make about $47,000 a year. So some of the skills and characteristics you need here are, of course, communication skills, empathy to understand debt situations, assertiveness and negotiation skills, and the resilience to handle challenging interactions. So in order to get started with this one, you basically just need a computer, a headset with a microphone, an internet connection, and basic office software. Depending on the state you live in, there may be some training requirements, but typically the company themselves will take care of that. So some of the pros here are the opportunity to develop valuable communication skills, potential for performance-based commissions, and the opportunity to gain experience in the finance industry. Some of the cons are you can deal with very difficult or confrontational debtors. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door! It can be somewhat of a high pressure environment and you need to get very good at handling rejection. He is a good boy. He must be in some kind of trouble. But overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 8.5 out of 10. The next one on the list is another one that's going to be great for you if you enjoy organization and making sure that things run smoothly, and that is going to be an administrative assistant. So basically, you're going to be providing essential support, filing invoices, managing schedules, and handling correspondence. And with this position, you'd expect to make about $39,000 a year. So this is one that's very easy to get into. Again, this is one of those careers. It doesn't pay all that well, but it's super easy to get started with a remote job. So some of the skills you need for this one are, of course, excellent organization skills, attention to detail, strong communication skills, and the ability to adapt quickly. And this is another one where you just need the basics of having a computer and an internet connection. So the pros of this one are it's easy to get a remote job. It's also really good for networking because you're going to be talking to a lot of people within your industry. And a lot of the time you will have potential for growth within the organization or within the industry. Some of the cons here are the possibility for a heavy workload and the need for excellent time management and organizational skills. This one goes there. That one so overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 7 out of 10. Please, sir. I want some more. The next one on the list is going to be a content reviewer. And this is basically where you're going to be reviewing different types of content on platforms to make sure that it aligns with the platform's guidelines and standards. So basically, you're going to be protecting users from spam and inappropriate content. Spam! So if you already spend many hours a day watching content on platforms like YouTube, you can actually get paid to do that. And content reviewers make about $44,000 a year. Some of the skills you need here are strong attention to detail, excellent judgment, and an understanding of platform guidelines. Now there's a lot of jobs posted on platforms like Google or Wattpad, and you can also check companies like Accenture to get started. Some of the pros of this one are you get an opportunity to help shape user experience, and you get an exposure to a wide range of creative content. Some of the cons are you may have to deal with potentially offensive or inappropriate content. You do have to adhere to strict platform guidelines. Some platforms are more strict than others. And in some cases, the content that you review might be disturbing. But overall, I'm going to give this one a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. By the way, check out my video on 17 work from home job companies that are always hiring by clicking right here.